The delivery ramp for the Model 3 for Tesla looks like an S curve. It's a log growth curve, meaning that it's really hard to predict exactly how many cars they're gonna produce because the growth is exponential. It follows this log growth pattern. But they just announced some of the Q4 numbers for what they've actually done. So we have hard data now instead of just speculation like before, which means that we can take those numbers plus their forward-looking statements and plug them into the statistical model and see what it may look like. That's what I've done and that's what we're gonna take a look at today. So welcome, if you're new here, I'm your host Ben Solens and this is Teslanomics, the show where we take a look at the data behind Tesla. I've been a data scientist for nearly 20 years, looking at data to help companies make better decisions. And now I'm here doing it for you to help you understand how this company is changing our world. So first, let's take a look and see what Tesla reported just recently for Q4 of 2017. So in total, they delivered 29,870 cars in Q4. That was about 15,000 Model S, 13,000 Model X, and only 1,550 Model 3. Now that is a 27% bump over Q4 of 2016 and is their best quarter ever. However, the Model 3 is the thing to look at, and of course that's what we're here and what we're talking about. Now they did produce almost 2,500 Model 3s in Q4, 24, 25 to be exact, but the thing to pay attention to was in the last week, the last few days of 2017, Tesla actually produced 793 Model 3s. So this now gives them an estimated run rate of about 1,000 per week starting at the first week in January. Now they've also updated their guidance instead of saying, five. 5,000 a week by the end of Q1. They're pushing that back towards the end of Q2. And they're saying that they should be at 2,500 per week by the end of Q1. And this is the second time that they're delaying that, but I plugged those numbers in and I'll show you why some of the math doesn't add up and what I think is a more realistic estimate for them. All right, so the first model we're going to look at here starts with an estimate of 1,000 per week for the first week in January, January 7th, the week ending. Now the second data point they gave us was 2,500 per week, so we're gonna plug that in at 331. Again, we're using a logistic growth model here, this S-curve model, which is what they say is what to expect with a delivery ramp. And so that gives us this growth model here. Now, if you extrapolate this out and see when they'll hit 5,000 per week, it will be much later than initially reported. In fact, using this model here, just those two data points, they won't hit that 5,000 mark until about December of 2018, if not early 2019. One assumption about this model specifically is that we're only expecting them to be able to produce 5,000 per week. Now, I have another model we'll look at which goes up to the 10,000 per week that they've reported they can do, but they haven't really proven that yet, so I'm a bit skeptical. So let's assume that the max they can do per week is 5,000. It looks like they won't really get to that mark until sometime in either very late 2018 or early 2019, much later than I think a lot of people would predict. But if they did that, they're looking at 192,576 Model 3s produced in the year, and a large number of them should be delivered. So really good in terms of the production and what it would mean for Tesla overall, still probably not as good as some investors would like. I think this is a realistic model, but it doesn't jive with the numbers that they put out there and the guidance. So let's see if we use their exact numbers, what we would get. So looking at the second growth model here, the one using the exact numbers that Tesla has given us, you can see it is an insanely steep curve. It is a really, really high growth rate, and that to me points to being a bit unrealistic. Just knowing how slow things are to are moving in the manufacturing space, granted Tesla is changing that, there is still a lot here that would need to go perfectly right in order for this to be a realistic model. And again, I'm looking at the peak production being 5,000 a week until they kind of prove us otherwise. So if you're gonna be proven wrong by somebody, Elon Musk isn't the worst guy to prove you wrong. And let's assume that I'm wrong about them only being able to get 5,000 per week and that they can actually get to 10,000 cars per week on that one line at the Fremont plant. Well, if that's true, we can plug in some numbers and see what that curve looks like. 
In this example, we have them hitting that 5,000 mark just at the end of Q2, just right before July, and then hitting the 10,000 mark sometime in 2020. It's a very, very incremental growth. That last 1% is always the toughest in models like this. However, that would mean that towards the end of 2018 that they're over 9,000 cars produced per week. This would give them a total for 2018 of 256,191 cars produced. Of course, not all of them will be delivered, but a large portion of them would be. This is much more like what Elon and everyone hopes to see. I hope to see it as well. I'm just more skeptical because they haven't proven any of the numbers they've thrown out to be close to accurate yet. Now, as this goes on, I'll update this model. You can view all of this data and download it, play with it, work with it yourself. The software I use is called Tableau software. I have online training courses if you wanna get into Tableau, but you can go get this on my website at taslanomics.co. And the last thing to consider is what this means for you. So most likely you're interested because you are wondering about the tax credit. Well. All of these models point to Tesla hitting the 200,000 mark in Q2 of 2018, which is pretty soon. That means that all the cars delivered within that quarter, plus the following quarter, will be 100% qualified for the tax credit of $7,500, the federal tax credit here in the US. After that, it drops down to 50% for the next two quarters, and after that, it drops down to 25%. So. I think that is still kind of what I'm, what I'm estimating. I haven't really dug too deep into it, but based on these numbers and if the delivery ramp follows any one of these models, that should be when they hit it. The kind of question is really early or late Q2, and would they do anything crazy like not deliver some cars in order to you know hold out for the following quarter, which a lot of people expect, and Elon has even tweeted about. So there's that. Now, the other thing that you may be wondering about is when are you gonna get yours? And I've got a lot of questions about this. I do have a delivery estimator out there, which I am not going to update. It is just far too speculative at this point, and their rollout strategy and everything is completely beyond you know any, any information I have. Uh, plus, they have their own delivery estimator. So if you haven't seen that, if you go to tesla.com slash model three, you can find it there, and it'll give you a, a window. I think if they produce upwards of 200,000 model threes this year, a lot of people are gonna be getting them, especially in the US. Folks overseas or with right-hand drive, uh, potentially, you may have to probably still wait until 2019 sometime. But a lot of people are gonna get their Model 3s this year, regardless of which model is the most accurate here. It's gonna be a monster year for Tesla and for electric vehicles. So I hope you guys are excited about it, and I hope you'll stick with me on this journey. I'm gonna be doing a lot of deep dives into the Model 3. I should have mine very soon, so stay tuned for all of that content. If you're new here and you like data and Tesla, subscribe. It doesn't cost you a thing, and what we do is we just break down all the economics and data behind it, so you have more information when you go to make a purchasing decision or just even using your vehicle. So stay tuned for that, and of course, you can get on my email list at teslanomics.co. And lastly, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys back here next time.